In this video, I'm going to reveal to you my exact course creation process. After having done it literally three times in the past year, I'm going to share with you exactly what works for me when it comes to actually creating an online course so then I can launch it and sell it to my audience. So I really broke this down into five main steps, which includes outlining the course, creating the slides, filming the lessons, uploading it into our course platform, and then running a beta tester program, which I'm going to talk about in depth for each of those things. Okay, so step one of creating an online course for me and what works for me is outlining the course first. So I actually start this usually as soon as I have an idea that I know I'm going to create a course, I literally will start outlining it in a Google Doc and I will brain dump everything I can think about in that course. I am fine tuning it and really fleshing a lot of things out when it comes to what I want to talk about inside of my course content. And so my courses, the majority are all of my courses, the bulk of it is video lessons that show my face that have slides and so I'm really just outlining like what the modules and the lessons are going to be even like the bullet points of what's going to be inside of each lesson and really fleshing this out in a document and a lot of times I'm working on this for a good two or three months so as things come to me as I think of new things for the course I'm adding it to this document and keeping it all in one place as far as my ideas of what I want to include inside of the course and really fleshing out like okay what how many lessons in each module and what's going to go in it and all of those things at the same time that we're doing this we also usually send out an audience survey to our audience, um, usually related to whatever the course topic is going to be and ask like, like what are their pain points and questions and things that they desire as it relates to that course topic. And that really helps me to fill in the gaps of things I might not have thought about when it comes to the topic and what I am educating on. So I really like doing that and it really helps me to make sure I'm, I'm hitting a lot of those big questions that people have when it comes to the course. And also because I will use this audience survey to launch the course and create like sales copies, sales emails, Instagram content, things like that. And so to make sure that my course actually delivers on that, right? I'm not just creating great marketing for it based on an audience survey, but that my course actually delivers, I'm going to that survey first and making sure that I am covering all my um, bases right there. Okay, so that is step number one. Step number two is to create the slides. So once I have outlined my course, this is probably takes me almost the longest as far as timeline. It's usually a few months, usually as soon as I have the idea, I'm like starting to write down this outline. And then I create the slides, which I also, in my mind, feel like it doesn't take a lot of time to create slides. But for me, it takes a lot of time to create slides because this is almost a continuation of outlining for me in that when I go to create the slides for an online course, it makes me think of examples and ways of teaching things that I never would have thought ha thought of when I was outlining the course. And so when I go to create the slides, I am, you know, really fleshing out like what is the course content going to be? Like what is the final course content that's going to be in here and making sure I have lots of visuals, lots of examples. And I'm just a huge fan also of not just having slides. I'm also keeping in mind my face is going to be showing in the corner of my slides. I personally think that takes your course to a whole nother level as far as quality. And just in my opinion, when I buy a course and I can't see someone's face, it makes me a little bit sad and I wish I could see their face. And it really just, it helps different learning styles or some people who if they see your face and can see you talking, they're just gonna learn so much better. And so I, that's why I'm a huge fan of doing that. So I'm keeping that in mind as I am creating the slide. And slide creation is probably, again, one of the, like I mentioned, the hardest parts for me because I, in my mind, I feel like it shouldn't be time consuming, but once I start doing it, I start thinking of so many ideas and examples I want to add. And it, it makes my course so much better that I'm doing it. I think if I handed this off to a team member to help with this, I wouldn't think through everything as much as I want to. So that's why it's almost a continuation of outlining for me and that helps me to really visually see like what I'm teaching and how I want to teach it. So that is step number two for me, creating the slides. I create all of my slides within Canva. If you want to try out Canva, there is a free version of the link below. I find it to be the easiest and it's also all like in a virtual platform online. And so it can also sync across devices and to team members and things like that. Step number three for me of creating my online courses is to actually film the video lessons. So for me with course lessons, some of my course lessons are 15 minutes long. Some can be up to 40 minutes long. It just kind of depends on the lesson. So definitely a lot more in depth and a lot more brain power than even YouTube video filming is for me. And usually 
usually I can film for a good three to four hours at a time in one day before I'm just burnt out. And I do this in the time span of minimum three to four days up to sometimes it'll take me seven or eight days like it did for my last course I filmed, my YouTube course. And it just depends on the course length. Like when I've created, like for example, in earlier in 2023, I refilmed a lot of our Reels mini course. And that course is about five to six hours total in length. And some of that is like tutorials that are a little more just like hands-on and showing you things versus like teaching and talking. And so that I know only took me a few days, but when I recorded my YouTube for business course, it definitely took me uh, it was definitely at least seven or eight days, if not more of filming time because it was minimum like eight to nine hours of sit down teaching content. It, it's it's probably our longest, one of our longer courses. And I really want to make sure that my energy is good for on camera. I'm not just doing it and pushing through just because I need to get it done, but that I'm really proud of my courses so that they last as long as possible. And just so my students have a great experience as well. And so for me, I know usually around three to four hours in one day and I try to do it in the span over at least a few days and those few days are spanned in the span of a few weeks or maybe two or three weeks and so I'm not doing it back to back to back I'm doing like one or two days of filming every single week and I just find that that works best for my energy levels even as someone who can bust out you know six YouTube videos in a few hours typically when it comes to course creation because it's even more in-depth and there's a lot more moving pieces I just need more time <laughs> um I also wanted to mention when it comes to filming video lessons so I like to use a program called Camtasia to film most of my video lessons. I also would recommend a program called Loom. You could do that to film your video lessons. Both give you the option to record your face like in the corner and at the same time as you're recording your less your slides, which I think is very important. Like I mentioned, I, I personally believe in that so much, which really helps to elevate your course quality. And then um, I'll, we'll have links to both of those programs below. Camtasia is just a little more of an advanced program and it costs some money versus Loom is a free program. It's a little bit simpler to use. And then once I'm done filming the video lesson, lessons I give them over to a team member who uploads them then like reviews them make sure that they look good there's no mistakes or anything that I missed and then she uploads them those into Kajabi so Kajabi is our course hosting platform if you have any interest in checking out Kajabi you can actually get a 30-day free trial at my link versus the 14-day free trial they typically offer on their website so it gives you a couple more weeks for free and it's my absolute favorite course platform I've been using it ever since early 2020 and I absolutely love it it is such a great platform for so many reasons. We, I love how everyone, like our students can log in and see everything in one place, how you can create checkout links, how you can have affiliate programs running in there. They just count Kajabi payments. It has the option to add Afterpay, which has been absolutely incredible. So I highly recommend checking out Kajabi if you are really serious about course creation and really wanna do this thing. Like Kajabi is a really, really, really great option. Okay, so once I am done actually filming the video lessons, the next stage of our course creation process is creating any workbooks, downloads, or anything else like templates that maybe we're going to plan to include with the course that I even mentioned in course lessons. So this is where I also have a lot of help from my team. We have a team member who creates the workbook, um, a team member who even helps create a lot of those downloads and things like that. And uh, I will usually collaborate on that because I have certain ideas of how I want to do certain downloads that I want to offer or certain templates that we have. But that's really the next phase of it and really just finalizing the course content and getting most of it in there. And so at the same time, we are thinking about uh, our beta tester program. So I like to run a beta tester program before I ever launch a course for multiple reasons, so many different reasons. And I prefer to do this after I have filmed the entire course. And sometimes I'll go back and film new lessons or update lessons after beta testers go through it and give me feedback. But I'm just a huge fan of doing it this way. And I have found that, so as we're finalizing the course with those downloads and templates and things like that, and moving into step number five, which is running the beta tester program we're thinking about that too and starting to post asking for beta testers and just depending on the timeline and what we want to do there and for our beta tester program we typically have we'll, we'll post about it so it is free beta testing so people don't pay to be a beta tester but it is a very intensive program and have very strict expectations to maintain access to the course so we post it to typically private channels like my close friends list on Instagram or our student Facebook community and once we we have about 50 applicants, we will close it down. So we'll turn off all of the posts or delete all of the posts. And we usually pick about five to 10 beta testers, depending on the course length and how big it is and how many we want. And we try to get a variety of people as far as different um, types of business owners or different stages in their journey, new versus
versus more advanced and things like that. And so uh, we typically give our beta testers once they have access two to four weeks to go through the course. So they have to complete usually at least 70 to 80% of the course content. We give them like a number of lessons they need to complete and they need to fill out a feedback form that is genuine and not just like, you know, just going through it to fill it out just to maintain access. But they have to give us a genuine feedback form filled out that is pretty in depth and gives us a good idea of like how they enjoyed the course, how it was helpful, what could be improved, a review, a testimonial we can use for marketing. And they have to fill that out to maintain access after the beta testing period. So if they don't fill it out, they don't get to keep their course access and they get lifetime access after that as if they had bought the course if they do fill it out. And we can see in Kajabi, they actually watch the video lessons, right? Another thing I want to mention here, why I love running a beta tester program like this is because not only is the feedback incredible, just to make sure that my course is complete and there's nothing missing from it that we can add or update, but two, the reviews and testimonials are everything when you're launching a course. Like having those reviews for people who have taken your course is gold and is what I really lean into when I am personally launching something. And so if I didn't have that, I just know it's going to be harder for me to launch something, right? And so that's why I really like to run a beta tester program beforehand. And once we're done running our beta tester program, we then launch the course, right? So this is where we go into our pre-launch period with priming our audience. We then usually have a five day launch period. We have some sort of launch event, like a, a live webinar or a live challenge. And there are so many things that go into that. So if you ever want me to do a video on that, definitely let me know in the comments. But if you are curious to learn more about my email marketing strategy when it comes to that, I'd really encourage you to watch out my free email class all about how to have a powerful plan for your email marketing to make income in your business. And a lot of that includes your live launches and the cadence of it and how long your launches are going to be and all of those different strategies. So if you're curious about that, be sure to watch my free email class. We'll have a link right below in the description. You can check that out. And again, if you have any questions about anything we talked about in this video, I'm here for you guys. Feel free to drop a comment down below. I'd love to answer any questions that you guys have. And if you're new around here as well, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. We upload new videos every single Tuesday at 8 a.m. Eastern. So if you want to stay up to date on our newest videos, go ahead and subscribe and I'll see you guys next week on Tuesday again. Bye guys.